capturing great footage on the GoPro in low light or at nighttime can seem mystifying and challenging. But in today's video, I'm going to help simplify this for you. I'm going to show you each and every setting I configure on my GoPro in order to get excellent low light and night light footage. And I'm also going to show you a couple tools that I use in order to get the very best footage possible from this camera in low light, night light, and indoor footage as well. Now I will be showing you these settings using the GoPro Hero 10, but it should be noted that you can use pretty much any GoPro model with these settings. I will specify if any of the settings are specific to the 9 or the 10, but in general, most of these settings will apply to all GoPros. In addition, in this video, I'll show you several scenes that I filmed using the GoPro Hero 10 at nighttime. Now I chose a holiday light setting for this because this is a great place to film nighttime footage. There's a lot of interesting things to see. So I will show you several scenes from that so you can see examples of what low light and night light footage looks like with the GoPro when using my settings. And of course, the night I planned to do this filming also happened to feature an ice storm. So I had that additional challenge, but I did not let the ice storm stop me. I still went out there and filmed. So let's get started and dive into these settings and tools. And if you do find this content to be useful, please hit that like button as you're watching. It helps me out a whole lot and I really appreciate it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you all the settings I configure on the actual GoPro itself. And then after that, I'm going to show you the two tools that I use in order to get the very best footage possible from this in low light and night light. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click down here on the modes at the bottom. And you can select any mode here. Now, if you're going to do a lot of low light and night light filming, I do recommend setting up a mode here that has those specific settings so that you can easily toggle to it and have all your settings right there and available. But for today's video, I'm just gonna go into cinematic mode here and I'm gonna click edit. And I'm gonna go through each and every one of these settings with my recommendations and explain why. So first of all, for the resolution and frame rate, I highly recommend putting it to the highest resolution possible on your camera. So in this case, the highest resolution is gonna be 5.3K. And for the frame rate, I'm gonna keep that at 24. And there is a specific reason for that. Uh, the main reason is that that 24 frames per second is gonna give us that best cinematic motion. And it's also gonna let us set that shutter speed to twice the value, which in this case would be one over 48. And having a shutter speed of one over 48 works particularly well at nighttime because it does allow a little bit more light into that camera. If for some reason you do want to do slow motion at nighttime, you could put this to 60 frames per second, but then you would have a shutter speed of one over 120 and that will tend to make your footage darker. And at nighttime, you want footage that looks really good and has the best lighting possible. So if you do want the slow motion, you could also do 30 and then slow it down a little bit for that little bit slower effect without it being too much. And if you do 30, you would want your shutter speed to one over 60. So for the lens, if you're using an anamorphic lens, which I'm going to talk about as one of the tools, you'll want to have this set to linear. I prefer using the anamorphic nearly all the time when I'm doing nighttime or low light filming because I like that extra cinematic effect. And I link to the anamorphic lens in the description below that I use, and I'm gonna talk about that next in the tools section. But if you are not using the anamorphic, you don't have to keep it in linear. You could do wide, super view, either of those up here. So you're not limited, but if you are using the anamorphic, you'll want to keep it at linear. And narrow, of course, is your other option down here, but I don't recommend using that ever because it's just too narrow of a field of view. So linear is my recommendation if you're using anamorphic like I am. Hypersmooth, you definitely want to have hypersmooth turned off. And the reason being is that hypersmooth will not work properly in night light or low light. If you're moving, your footage is gonna be very jittery. It's gonna look really bad and it's not gonna be usable. And if you're standing still or stationary in low light or night light, you don't need hypersmooth anyway. So regardless, you're gonna to wanna to turn that off. And this of course probably raises the question with you, well, if I turn hyper smooth off, then my footage is not gonna be stable. You are correct. So if you are gonna be moving in the low light or night light, you're gonna to want to have a gimbal of some kind. And I've linked to two of them that I recommend in the description below. And in a few minutes, right after these settings, I'm also gonna talk about the gimbal and why you need it and which one I recommend and the features that each one offers. Next, scheduled capture that does not apply. You can keep that off. Duration can be no limit, hindsight can be off, timer can be off, and zoom should be 1.0x. Next, under ProTune, 
you wanna make sure the bit rate is set to high. And for the shutter speed here, you're gonna to wanna to set that to twice your frame rate. You could keep it auto, but auto is not going to work well at nighttime. It's gonna to tend to make your footage either too dark or too bright. It's not gonna work well at all. And it's gonna make a lot of ghosting effects in your footage potentially. So shutter, always set that to twice your frame rate. In this case, I'm using 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna set that to one over 48. And like I said, if you're using 30 frames per second, you'll wanna put it to one over 60. And if you're using 60 frames per second, you'll wanna put it to one over 120. For the EV comp, that's not going to apply. For the white balance, at nighttime, you're generally gonna to wanna to set this to 4,000K. That's usually a really good white balance for nighttime footage. So I recommend 4,000K. But whatever you do, just don't keep the white balance at auto. If you set it to a value, you can at least change it later on when editing really easily. And you can apply that change to all your footage. If you set it to auto, you could run into problems with that and it can make it very hard to edit. For your ISO minimum, make sure that's set to 100. And your ISO max, I generally do not recommend going over 800. And the good thing is with these settings, as long as there's at least some lighting from street lights or from Christmas lights as with my footage, it's gonna look okay. And you're not gonna have to go to the 1600. There will be some settings if it's really, really dark and there's very little lighting available where you may need to go to 1600. But once you get to 1600 for ISO max, it does introduce quite a bit of grain into the footage. So if you can keep it at 800 and get good results, which you can check, you know, film a little bit and then check and make sure it looks okay. If it does look okay, keep it at 800. For the sharpness, you definitely wanna keep that at low. This is gonna give you best results with nighttime footage. For the color, I definitely recommend keeping that at either flat or natural. If you go up here to Vibrant, which is called GoPro on some of the older GoPros, that can sometimes give you weird results with nighttime footage. Uh, some of the colors are gonna look overdone and kind of pixely. So I recommend flat as the best choice, but if you don't use flat, then use natural. And for raw audio and wind, that's not going to apply. If you do want good sound from your GoPro, I recommend using an external microphone or at least the media mod audio, which of course right now it shows media mod front because I do have the media mod attached to my GoPro at present. All of these shortcuts down here will not apply. Now, as I mentioned before, if you're doing indoor filming, nearly all of these settings will be the same. And the reason for that is indoor filming, you don't have a good source of natural light. So for indoor filming, you're generally gonna to wanna to have all of these settings set the same. If you're not moving around indoors, then you probably would not need a gimbal. You could simply mount your GoPro stationary to a tripod and you could have hyper smooth off and it's not gonna matter. So if you're doing some type of indoor filming where you're talking to the camera, then you can easily have that hyper smooth off and use a tripod. You wouldn't need a gimbal. And the same would go for the anamorphic lens. Unless you're doing something really cinematic indoors, you probably don't need the anamorphic lens. Uh, you probably could just use the standard GoPro lens indoors. But if you are moving around indoors, I do highly recommend having a gimbal with that because most of the same rules for low light or night light are going to apply indoors. Your footage will look bad unless it's really well lit. So if you're moving around with hyper smooth on, it's gonna have that jittery jumpy effect to it unless you have really good natural lighting in there. Now that we've gone through the settings, let's talk about the tools. The first tool that I use is a gimbal. And the reason you need that gimbal is because with HyperSmooth turned off for the low light and night light, the footage is gonna be rough. It's gonna be very unstable, jittery. It's not gonna look good. So you've gotta have a gimbal. In the description below, I've linked to two gimbals that I recommend. The first one is more of a budget model. It's called the Inky Falcon. And the Inky Falcon is fully compatible with the GoPros. Going back to about the five or the six, you can control the camera from the gimbal, which is a great feature. That gimbal routinely goes for about $120, but when it's on sale, I've seen it go for about 90 to $100. The other gimbal is the Moza Mini P. That gimbal is a little bit nicer, and that's actually the gimbal that I used when filming this video. And the great thing about the Moza Mini P is not only does it fit the GoPro on there, the Moza Mini P will also stabilize your smartphone and it will also stabilize any mirrorless or DSLR up to two pounds. In fact, I'm using the Moza Mini P to talk to this camera right now. 
I've got one of my Sony cameras mounted on it, and that's what I'm talking to. So it's doing a great job. Obviously, I'm not moving around with it right now, but it's just doing a great job there, chilling with my camera mounted to it. Because it can also be used as a tripod. So if you're not sure which gimbal you should get, my advice is if you're only gonna use a gimbal with a GoPro, then you probably want the Inky Falcon. But if you're interested in a gimbal that you can use with the GoPro, your smartphone, or a mirrorless or DSLR up to two pounds, then I highly recommend the Moza Mini P. The Moza Mini routinely goes for about $200 but I've often seen it for about $169 when it goes on sale on Amazon. $169 is a great bargain for this, considering you can use it for a GoPro, a smartphone, or a mirrorless or DSLR up to two pounds. Now, the second tool I use, which is completely optional, is the Skyry Anamorphic Lens, and that attaches to your GoPro here. This anamorphic lens is compatible with the Hero 9 and Hero 10. If you own any other GoPro, this would not apply to you as it would not be compatible. But what the anamorphic lens does is it gives you that truly cinematic look. So what the anamorphic does is it gets an extra wide field of view, but on the GoPro, you still keep it in linear. You can't use it in wide because it will show the borders, but the anamorphic gives you those black bars on the top and the bottom. Naturally, you don't have to add them. Once you make a tweak when editing the footage, those black bars will natively show there on the top and the bottom. And if you don't know how to do that or haven't seen my video that discusses this, I've linked to it above. This video talks about how to get the very best cinematic footage from your GoPro, and I highly encourage you to watch it if you haven't watched it yet. The section in there that you'll want to watch though is where I show how I edit that anamorphic footage. In that part of the video, I show you how to adjust it in your video editing software. And this is necessary in order for it to look right on your 16 by nine timeline. If you don't make the adjustment, the anamorphic footage is going to look really stretched. Everything's gonna look extra tall in it. So you wanna adjust it so that everything has its proper proportion. The reason I like the anamorphic lens so much, especially for nighttime footage, is that wider field of view, and also just the way it handles that motion blur and the colors in there, I think it looks extra good. But you do not need the anamorphic lens. All the settings I showed you today will work perfectly fine with the default GoPro lens. I've also linked to the anamorphic lens in the description below, in case you're interested in purchasing that. That goes for about $69. So these are the settings and tools that will get you the very best footage from the GoPro in low light, night light, and indoor light. I hope you found this video to be useful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button if you haven't already. And if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe and bell notification button, and you'll be notified every time I publish a new video. Until we talk again, happy GoProing in low light, night light, and indoor light.